Greetings, folks, and welcome to today's show. Our guest today is uh, Representative Judd Matheny. And uh, as I'm sure you're aware, we have uh, Judd on the show once or twice a year, usually before the legislature starts and, uh, and then afterwards to see uh, what they've done to us. <laughs> and uh, so it's time for us to do that again uh, for this year. And I think uh, this coming legislature uh, seems to have not one, but two or three pretty hot items, uh, Judd, is that? Yes, sir, it, it, there'll be quite a bit. And uh, i just like to say, I, I like to, to not only mention what the legislature might do to us, but instead I like to say what we don't let them do. I think it's just as important what we don't let happen up there as it is what we, what we allow to happen. Uh -huh. So, okay. But, but it is going to be an active year, and um, there's yeah, a bit, you got and we're walking into a uh, very tight budget year, actually a, a, a decent deficit, and we're we're launching a lot of new ambitious programs: the Tennessee Promise, potential Medicaid expansion, uh, a lot of talk about a gasoline tax now. On top of all that, so we we we're going to have a lot to debate. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Gasoline tax. I think that's a that's a past due subject. Uh, that's been locked in concrete for too many years. So, okay, well, uh, let's take a short commercial break, folks, and uh, we'll come back and uh, find out what's going on. You made the time and the sacrifice to broaden their horizons, to see their smiles but mostly to make lifelong memories. We think it's time to do it again, just the two of you. Don't let illness or injury slow you down. The rehab team at Life Care Center of Tullahoma is ready to help you live well. Let the smokehouse be your mountain getaway destination in beautiful Monteagle, Tennessee. Enjoy our cabins, restaurant, and old general store. Shop the smokehouse.com featuring homemade barbecue sauces, jellies, and many other fine Tennessee products. Our live Music on the Mountain series features some of the best local and Nashville talent every Friday and Saturday night, 6.30 p.m. No cover, kids welcome. We're back, folks, and we're talking uh, today to, uh, with uh, Representative Judd Matheny, and we want to find out what's, uh, what's confronting the legislature this year, and maybe some even indication of the way it will go. Uh, to the extent we want to start with education standards, and uh, to the extent we don't have time to get to other items on the agenda, then we will be back next month uh, with a follow-on show to uh, finish the job. So. Uh, well, John, let's let's talk about a, a couple of basics here. The uh, the business community is telling us uh, fairly consistently, I think, that we are not giving them qualified employees, and that particularly with the advance in technology, the fact that everything is going uh, high tech, that uh, we're not giving them employees that uh, that can do the job. Uh, is that is that generally recognized and accepted where it, you come from? Partially, and I think, uh, and, and I'll refer quite a bit back to September the 17th of 2014 when the governor held a, a statewide educational summit in Nashville, uh, which is accessible on the governor's website, the, uh, the archive footage of it. And we heard equal testimony uh, from businesses, not only that they need higher and more skilled, higher qualified and more skilled workers, which we agree with that, but many businesses, especially those in the, in the core manufacturing industries, said more than anything, they need people that just have good work ethic and they have good hygiene and they'll show up on time and they'll understand what it means to be a team player and not switch jobs for a nickel or, or not quit because they break a sweat before eight o'clock in the morning. So it really is, it's sort of a, a bifurcated issue and, and I think that, that's gonna uh, make us pay a lot more of attention to high school career and technical education uh, again, as well as advanced degrees in our technology centers or, and uh, community colleges and four-year institutions. So we're gonna, we're gonna look at, at, at both of those issues closely and we realize there's gonna be a lot of overlap. Um, most of our high schools in the state and, and in particular, I know the ones here in Coffee County are working to 
uh, have some of their curriculums now mesh with what the community colleges are doing, whether it be mechatronics programs, whether it be beginning to expose themselves to 3D printing and advanced computer programming and things of that nature. And we really do want to try to strike some middle ground for the average student where we can not only create good work ethic and, and civic responsibility, help them to foster those, but we also want to help them have a holistic education on computers, on manufacturing techniques, on the demands of the modern world marketplace. So we'll be looking at all those things. Yeah. Well, does that, does that say that there is general recognition that uh, we need to do a lot of improvement? We need to be doing things better yes, sir. and faster, probably. Definitely better. And I think before we do things faster, we want to make sure we're doing them better. Yeah. And then and once we have a plan that works, uh, what, what, I, what we do know, uh, and, and the comments I'm going to make are specific to the Tennessee House of Representatives, because that's who I'm a, a portion of. And, and we've, been, we've had a little bit different position in Tennessee State Senate on a lot of of the standard and assessment issues and we've had a different opinion than the governor's had in the Tennessee House and uh, it, it's really a sort of a unique phenomenon but it's the way our founding fathers set it up is that the body that's closest to the people every day uh, is is the House of Representatives so, so we think that we have the most horsepower in this argument and uh, we, we have voted in the past to slow down and let's take stock of where we are let's come up with some some much better standards and assessments that are much more widely accepted by teachers and educational, other educational professionals uh, without losing any ground, without losing uh, the, the success we've made to date. Um, but let's, let's find something that's going to work and it's going to work long term with minimum modifications and stop some of the whiplash that's been in the classroom with regards to changing various uh, directions that have well, yes. been in place. We, uh, we really are now to, to start over again in the standards area in one sense of the word is uh, is aggravating a situation that's been going on for 10 and years. And I don't think... I well, feel sorry for the school teachers, you know. They, oh, uh, I, I have I have learned in the last four years and, and, and some of it's been tough lessons for me uh, from the education community because my background's been military and law enforcement and, it's, and education's not been my bailiwick. And, and I put a lot of faith in some of the leadership in the state to make good educations on or good decisions on education and they failed to do that. Um, so I had to go out and seek the answers myself. And the education community in, in Coffee and Warren County has been very good. They've been patient with me to help educate me. And I believe I have a, a pretty good idea of what the teachers would like to see to increase morale. And it's not, it's not just money. There's a lot of other things uh, that need to be done within the classroom to, to allow them to be able to do their job the best they can. And, uh, and we're going we're gonna to try our best without hitting the reset button on standards to pick the best of the standards that we have and that are in place and that we know are working and then supplement those with some new ones that have been created by Tennesseans and endorsed by Tennesseans. And that was sort of the, uh, the theme that came out of the Governor's Education Conference on September 17th. Okay. And the Governor's press release will reflect that if you'll read it. All right. Uh... Well, uh, basically, how do you see the legislature's role in this process? What much you know, more what are you trying oversight. to do, and at what level of detail? Well, are, are normally, you? this has been normally, um, and I've I've been there for basically two governors. I was there at the tail end of Sunquist's administration, very tail end, but all of Bredesen, and now the first four years of Haslam, each governor wants to have to be the education governor. That's a, a very sexy thing to to do politically. Um, but we've seen the whiplash that's created in the classroom. We've seen that it's been consistent models that have not given us the results that businesses say that we need. It's, it's decreased teacher morale, um, race to the top, um, definitely decreased teacher morale. It put a lot no of- No child left behind, yes, sir, race to the All top. those things yeah. have put a lot of restrictions on teachers and their ability to teach and, and to have more education time per student versus more regulatory time with administration officials. So I think you're going to see, and, and you saw a very good example of it on March the 13th of this year when the legislature, legislature halted the implementation of more Common Core and, and more of the assessment test until we could get to the point where we are now, which is where the governor now is, is saying, okay, let's, let's stop, let's take a year and he has launched a website now that folks can go to to make comments on our education curriculum standards assessments and then we're going to use those to formulate uh, 
basically oversight that the legislature's uh, going to so you're, get help. So you're agreeing with the governor's proposition to uh, put this whole thing through a, a, an assessment uh, process over probably the next year at least. A absolutely, and I think that's sorely needed and, and the Tennessee teachers and administrators need to be the prime driver in the promulgation of those standards and those assessments, not the National Governors Association, not the Bill Gates Foundation, and not the federal government. And we all seem to be of like mind at that point. Mm. Well, I'm not sure uh, that the uh, that putting the overwhelming uh, weight in the, in the teachers, uh, their input obviously is uh, is is very much needed and should be uh, examined and paid attention to, but they might not necessarily be uh, at least uniformly uh, motivated toward uh, toward getting the, the toughest system. Well, we're talking about having I, I, we're talking about know, having I, standards that are high, higher than we've done now that can be benchmarked to anybody else in the country and also to the uh, international uh, standards. Well, I don't think it's going to be very hard for Tennessee to benchmark with the rest of the country. It will be diff more, it's more difficult on the international scale. And um, I'll, I'll take some slight disagreement with you on the comment that teachers shouldn't be a, dri a driving factor here. I think they need to be. Um, I think there's enough education professionals. I know I've met many um, that are in the classroom or have been in the classroom for an extended amount of time and are now administrators that are fully capable of helping us shepherd through this situation. Yeah, okay. Well, all right. Uh, <clears throat> well, again, I guess I'm not sure I, I got, uh, let's, let's go back and sure. summarize uh, how you see the legislature's role Absolutely. in all this. Um, we, would, we would work with the governor and his plan to take a year to look over the new situation, um, to hit the brakes on the park assessment test and the, and the Common Core Standards implementation into the state of Tennessee. And we'll we'll allow some of the some of the turmoil in the classroom to settle down as we promulgate the new standards and assessments. Then the legislature will actually hold hearings and and vet those standards, vet those assessments. We as legislators will communicate to the best of our ability with local school systems and, and local educators to make sure that we're roughly on the right track. And uh, and then we will we will eventually seek authority and, and probably gain it um, above and beyond. Um, what the executive is used to having. But we were probably going to want to have more oversight over this governor and the implementation of his education standards than he's had in his first term and definitely that past governors have had. The legislature is tired of, of being led astray by a single individual's motivations to change an education system. And we would rather collectively change the education system through the professional community and not just the business community, but the educators both. And it doesn't mean where the educators are going to get everything they want. Um, it doesn't mean the business community is going to be able to get everything they want at first, but it's going to mean that the system that we put in place is going to have enough confidence that everybody tries as hard as they possibly can. And I but think the, we'll get But the legislature is going to get whatever they want, huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> D definitely the House. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, a re it's really I'm a not sure you guys are the ones that make that decision, you know. And, and part of the problem, if you look at it, uh, when looking at some of the history of this uh, standards battle, uh, We've been mucking around in standards for the last two or three or four decades. Decades, yes, sir. And uh, all over the state, all over the Since country. Since about 78. And, and all the states running off in their own direction, and you wind up with standards that are, uh, the quality level is, uh, is all over the map, and uh, the content is all over the map. A lot of them are too cotton-picking complicated, you know, they're almost... Uh, uh, so, I uh, I think I think you've got a real challenge there. Yeah, and you we want, agree there needs. You want to be careful about what position you put your you put your in, in your, the legislature in. And uh, well, we we agree there needs to be minimum standards that are high, but we also agree there needs to be the the uh, discretion within the individual um, education agencies to be able to exceed those standards uh, in any way they choose, and also not only for the motivation that might be in a particular school or in a particular community, but also for regional economies. This state and definitely this nation is not designed to all perform the same function at the same time. We have many different um, societies, we have many different 
um, backgrounds. And, and we need to be able to, to make sure that each region has the ability to have some authorship over, over it. And not just 15%. Common Core basically tied funding to 85% of your curriculum had to be Common Core. And, and we think that's way too high. Um, and uh, that, that is in the uh, 2008 education memorandum signed by then Commissioner Keith Webb and Governor Bredesen. It's that exact language I just quoted. We need to take a short commercial break, folks, and uh, we'll come back and go some more. At the time, maybe you were just building a bridge, a business, or a community. Maybe you were simply working for a home or a better tomorrow. At the time, you served out of duty and love of country. But in that time, we see a legacy created, an American dream lived. The rehab team at Life Care Center of Tullahoma is ready to help you live well. The Russell Barnett Automotive family would like to wish you and yours a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. For the past 34 years, we've proudly served you in the new and pre-owned automotive industry. We look forward to serving you many years to come. We have over a thousand vehicles to choose from at RussellBarnett.com. That's Russell Barnett Crosser Dodge Jeep Ram, Chevrolet GMC and Ford of Winchester, and Russell Barnett Ford and Kia of Tullahoma. That's RussellBarnett.com. And remember, why buy anywhere else? I'm meteorologist Leland Statham from the News Channel 5 Weather Center. Look to Jim Fuller and crew for local news night here on Channel 6. We're back, folks. We were talking today with uh, uh, Representative Judd Matheny, and we have been talking up to now about uh, education standards, and we'll carry on with that for a bit. Uh, if that runs out, uh, runs out the clock, uh, we'll be back next month to talk about the uh, rest of the legislature's agenda. Gladly so. So, uh, well, Judd, the uh, one thing you're talking about doing is, is really uh, introducing another perturbation into the system when the system has been getting perturbations once a year for the last 10, 12 years. But, but so, this one's kind of, this is a bottom up drive. The rest have been a top down um, change. And th this is a bottom up desire for change. This is coming from the rank and file teacher and the individual administrator in many of our counties and our education agencies. And it's and it is it has put the pressure on the the, the the I'm considered the the you know the lower chamber. We're the once again we're the people that are closest to the electorate, we get the most grief, deservedly so, and we, we, we receive the most input, and we, we have to be more reactive than the Senate, which can be more deliberative. And everything for the past four years has been screaming, put on the brakes, slow well, down, listen to us. You're also going to need to exercise a sizable leadership role because sure. uh, you can't set up a system that's worthwhile that you're not going to have a lot of griping about. I, I down, think we did exactly. What, yeah, I think we did exactly what you're saying on March 13th when we stopped the governor's plan and said, slow down, Tennessee doesn't want this. You don't get 88 out of 99 legislators to all agree on something. Totally bipartisan. Um, all but one Democrat and, uh, and almost every Republican in the House unless there's a serious problem. At the end of the day, when we make a decision like that on the House floor, it's usually for a good reason. And I think that shows leadership instead of capitulation to the executive. Well, I guess we shall see. We shall. Uh, okay, so, but for starters, you're gonna go through the, uh, you're gonna go through the uh, process the review process that the governor wants to set up yes sir right now it's it's in the it's in the <coughs> data collection and basically the public comment phase and what, what sort of objectives do you see uh, if you're looking at a set of standards what are you looking for well once again I'm not an education professional I can't I can't tell you all the the nomenclature of the various standards and things that take place but I'm looking for positive signals from my educational professionals in my district that we're headed in the right direction. I'm not the one to sit down at a table and dictate to the educational community what they need, but I am the one to listen to them and to react to what they need. And that's what, I'm, that's what I intend to do. I'm, my job was to identify the problem, which it took some time for the legislature to truly identify the frustration that was out there and to, to understand that we were being led astray to some degree by some 
members of leadership in our party and, and in the state and and that, that we need to put the brakes on and, and let's reassess these situations. So it's not my job necessarily to promulgate these issues, but it is my job to make sure that the issues that are agreed upon, first locally and I operate in concentric circles, I start here and then I work my way out to, 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 to get my job, my marching orders. And when I'm satisfied that my district is happy, especially the educational professionals and the parents, are happy with the direction that we plan to go, whether it's a hybrid of where we are, uh, infused with some new things, uh, I don't think there'll be any, any backsliding whatsoever. We are all committed to not losing any ground, uh, other than maybe a year's timeline in the implementation of, of standards. But then I'll be ready to act to implement those things and be sure that they're done. Well, you're talking about more than a year. And you got to do the standards, well, and then the, you got to do the right. assessment the to first, go with it. The and first that's, step that's was, the, was the suspension for a year, yeah. which w will be up in, yeah. on June the 30th of next year. The second step is the governor's review process and public comment process, which is going to be a, an additional year as of November of this past year. And, so it will and be taking the evaluation, teacher evaluation, slowing that down, slowing them down, and, and and putting yeah. some some more fairness in there. There are too many teachers that have told me that they're being evaluated on things that they don't even have indirect control over hardly within their schools. And we need to make sure that when teachers are evaluated, they're evaluated over the things that they have mostly direct control over. Well, are we going to come out with uh, one of your objectives? Uh, is everybody going to agree that when a student comes out of high school, they should be college or workplace ready? Yes. You're going to agree to that? Absolutely. So the whopping remediation rates we've had in college of them having to go back they to have take to be stuff corrected. Out, that's going to be fixed. They have to be corrected. Now, I'm, I can't sit here and tell you they're going to be fixed like that, but that is one of our objectives is to slow that 25 plus percent remediation rate to get that corrected so the community colleges and our technology centers can truly concentrate on advancing their degrees and their education and not making up lost ground. Okay. Uh, are we going to be a part of a, a national movement to have a, a, common, uh, a common set of standards that, so that we can measure across the, the whole country? Yes, I think we'll be involved in that. And I, and I think it, any prudent person that's been paying attention in the legislature uh, would agree with that, that we have to be part of that. But we don't have to tie everything to that, especially funding, future growth, um, teacher evaluations and things of that nature. There are some, there's nothing wrong with Tennesseans governing Tennesseans and Tennesseans coming up with the standards that Tennesseans need. And there's nothing wrong with Tennessee being a little bit different than Kentucky or Arkansas or Memphis or, or, or Mississippi or Alabama. And, and I know that's a very broad statement that I'm saying, but we, this is the gist of what we're doing right now. We are basically in a holding pattern until we can get the public comment period over with for the implementation of Common Core to date, so we can use that information from the teachers, the parents, um, businesses, et cetera, combine that with where we are today and either move forward, reassess, reinforce whether there's more money we need, um, make that strong case, whether it's just uh, tighter standards we need, looser standards and other subjects. We're gonna wait until all the information's in and we're gonna make a good decision. Yeah. And, okay. and I think the legislature has actually, through this process, has become much closer to the education community. In my mind, I know I have, and I've learned a lot more. Um, I've learned a lot more about just what kind of, of, of limitations that teacher has in their discretion in the everyday classroom now and how frustrating that is. And we have a serious morale problem in many of our schools and many of our systems with a good number of our teachers. And, uh, and we've, had the, uh, we've had an exodus of a lot of very valuable um, well, you're bound to have people who, are, who might be considered, good people who might be considering education, you know, are now puzzling, do I want to Well, and, and it do doesn't, it doesn't pay that. enough to have the stress that being a physician has. It just doesn't. And, well, and uh, it, you, need to, you need to be able to exercise your passion there and well, get some reward you, from that. Yeah, time. you guys, uh, you're going to pay a lot of attention to uh, teacher salaries and uh, and teacher qualifications and uh, well the legislature will and, and we hope that you know the governor's been committed to uh, having Tennessee be one of the fastest rising um,
teacher salary scales in the southeast and, and uh, we've not been able to deliver that yet. And this year it's going to be even more difficult because we're walking into probably a 350 to 500 million dollar budget deficit. Yeah, well, and, of course um, you, keep, you keep eliminating sources of revenue all along too. On that. Uh, well, I think the governor, I think, see, once again, I think the government's trying to do more than it's designed to do, and that's why we're running out of revenue. Yeah, okay. Well, all right. Uh, all I can say is I guess I, uh, I wish you luck on that because uh, Thank you're, you. <laughs> you're, you're undertaking a, uh, a whale of a of Well, a, the, the a easy thing to do would I'm be not, to ignore it and uh, let somebody else do it, but we've jumped into it. And, and once again, the House of Representatives in Tennessee is the reason that the brakes have been put on and that we're now listening acutely to the teachers and to the administrators and trying to get this fixed. Okay. Well, guess what, folks? We've run out of time. So we didn't get any of the other issues and we'll be back on the 22nd of January to uh, take up the, uh, the rest of the cause and maybe a little more of this. Well, and, and as, so, we, as we close in a moment, I'll uh, maybe give a teaser of a few of those things. Okay. That we'll talk about. Let's... Uh, Let's take a short commercial break, folks, and then we'll have to wrap up. Imagine a world with more birthdays. We strive for it every day. We fight to get people the best access to care and the chance for more parties to plan. We are the American Cancer Society. Help create a world with more birthdays at morebirthdays.com. Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. We've been talking today, folks, with Representative Judd Matheny. Uh, today's program has been devoted to the, uh, the coming debate on educational standards in, uh, in Tennessee. And uh, so we'll be back next month to uh, talk about the rest of the things going on in the legislation, which are... Well, the, the two biggest things we're going to have, uh, in addition to a, a budget deficit that we're going to have to probably, the governor has ordered 7% cuts in all states and departments, or not the actual cuts, but to be prepared for those cuts. And so those are being uh, put forward now throughout budget hearings. So we're going to try to mitigate those as much as possible, obviously, and hopefully we won't have to cut that deeply. But an increase in the gasoline tax is going to be up for heavy debate, and it remains to be seen if we'll actually try to vote on that this year. Um, I, I'm going to, it's going to be a, a tough sell um, due to a lot of factors we'll get into on the, tw on the 22nd of this month. And then also Medicaid expansion, that's going to be another huge issue. Yeah. And um, yep. that's going to be another tough sell, not because we're necessarily philosophically opposed to it totally, it's because there's just not the money out there to get back into the morass that we that this state found itself in a decade ago uh, with 10 care expansion that was uncontrolled and was, was approaching 40% of our budget. So these are the arguments that uh, I think will dominate our next show for sure. And um, so I look forward to uh, right after the governor's inaugurated and we have our organizational session the 13th to the 19th of January, we'll be on your show with fresh information. You're, uh, you're getting a, you're, you're uh, go expecting a uh, stimulating session uh, this next time. Stimulating and, and uh, probably breakneck. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thanks very much. Uh, and Merry Christmas for joining to everybody us and, and Happy New Year. Thank you, folks. Uh, yes, thank you, folks, for joining us. And Judd and I wish you Happy New Year and Merry Christmas. Absolutely. Bye-bye.